I just hit the record button. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let me check and make sure that um, you can see me, or rather hear me, not see me, because I'm pretty sure you can see me. Um, and if it cuts out, uh, <laughs> it is perfect. It is storming at my house, and I may have to um, deal with my puppy dog because he's kind of scared of storms. But um, if it does go out, then um, the recording will still be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, it just might be a little bit uh, if my power goes out. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Cassandra. I... <laughs> I made a commitment last year that I wanted to bring this to you because this is a skill set that it's the only one that I've ever found that allows you to really, truly create the freedom and the lifestyle that you dream of without having to get another job, without having to be a salesperson. And it was not available to the normal person, you know, prior to the internet. You had to have like ridiculous amounts of money just to even be involved and you had to be around places like London and New York just to just to get involved right so I wanted to share this with you because most people don't even know about it and it's something that I believe I personally truly believe that every person should know this skill set uh, as young as possible right I know people who have um, sons and daughters who are like six years old who are learning this skill set and actually being successful on the demo accounts which are basically like monopoly money but it's allowing you to learn how to use the skill sets so that you can actually invest with your real money. So um, let me go ahead and switch to my notes here. So last week I covered um, moving averages, what they are, how to use them in determining a trend, and even how to get out of your trades. This week I've actually had several people uh, approach me and say, hey, I've blown, you know, I've been trading Forex for a while now, but I've blown nine accounts. I've blown a lot of money. I've blown this. How do you not blow your money? So in this video, I wanted to share 15 ways for you not to blow your account. And then at the very end, I'm going to be sharing with you the trades that I took last week. And I did lose some. But what's interesting about the ones that I lost, um, I probably lost for the exact same reason. And so I'm going to share that with you today. So let me go ahead and get started. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> looking at my notes here. So first of all, Tip number one, you need to become educated. This is not something that you can learn overnight. This is not something that most people can probably learn by themselves online. Yes, there's plenty of information out there that's free. Yes, there's plenty of information on YouTube. But here's the thing. People who are professionals, doctors, uh, programmers, um, people who went to college, right? And even people who didn't, right? You have in, um, actual engineers like um, uh, technicians who work on your electricity. They spend years learning their craft. They they get they get the knowledge. They get the um, uh, actual hands-on experience, right? They don't just learn it overnight. And so, hey, Israel, thanks so much for joining. And so you have to become educated if you want to learn this craft and be able to have it pay you no matter where you are in life, right? Now, obviously, from what you see of here, past results not typical. They do not guarantee nor dictate your future success. I'm simply sharing with you what's possible, all right? So first of all, you have to become educated if you don't want to blow your accounts. Second, you need to find a mentor. And this could be somebody who, like myself, you know, maybe you're learning from someone who's actually sharing their experiences. But I have found that if you if you truly want to um, break down your educational barriers and kind of just cut down your learning curve, it needs to be someone who can um, be there for you more than once a week like I am right now, right? I personally uh, decided to get involved with a company that not only provides an academy on how to learn Forex and crypto, which I'm not trading right now, I'm just trading Forex, but it teaches you both because it's a skill that you can also use with stocks I and mean, you can use it anywhere. Um, the company also provides you with tools, direct mentorship, over 60 plus hours every single week and live, right? Um, also community traders and so many other benefits. But I did that because I know that I don't have the time to go out and find all these free videos on YouTube and try and figure out which one works best for my schedule. I need to know that if I have, let's say, I know I can only trade for a few hours a day, which traders, which mentors I can go to and who will be doing 
whatever it is that I need for, for my particular trading plan for my particular life. So for me, that was my best option. And I truly believe that for most people, but I also get that some people don't have the money to invest in themselves. They don't believe that they have the time to invest in themselves, but this is a, a skill set that I firmly believe that everyone should learn. Hey Jeff, thanks so much for joining. So number one, become educated. <clears throat> So sorry. I was sick all week and I'll probably be coughing for the next two. Become educated. Find a mentor. <coughs> so sorry. Tip number three. Join a trusted community. Apologies. Join a trusted community. So you have to be in a community because, again, yeah, you can maybe learn it on your own, but how long is that going to take you? How much time is that going to take you? How many mistakes are you going to make before, you know, you're able to really get going, right? So if you if you're not part of a trust community, find one. There's plenty of groups on Facebook, but I found a lot of them are very spammy. Um, and a lot of times they don't really provide value. So again, for me, I invested in a company that already provides that for me. And so I know that people that I go to that I ask these questions for them, they are legit. Okay. So number one, become educated, find a mentor, join a trusted community. And then number four, understand the law of compounding and the law of spirals. So I first heard of the law of compounding when I first got into network marketing back in 2009. Um, since then, I've created my own digital marketing agency, um, and I do my best to help other network marketers with their on online marketing experiences. But I first heard about it when I first got into network marketing. So what is the law of compounding? Um, <clears throat> basically, it's... First of all, the best way that I know how to explain it is that it's continual efforts <clears throat> that you utilize that build upon each other so that you create a snowball effect. <clears throat> it's a snowball effect that happens and allows you to earn more faster. So if you've ever heard of, <clears throat> sorry, uh, there's a website called law of interest or something like that, where it shows if you compounded your interest daily that you could make like $2 million in a year or two years or something like that, um, if you just kept adding to it, right? And that's something that most newbie amateur Forex traders don't understand is they may start having some leverage and they start having a lot of wins and maybe they get their account up. They're like, yes, I can take money out now. Well, <laughs> when you withdraw from that account, you are removing that leverage that allows you to make bigger trades and to create more uh, of that snowball effect, more of that law of compound. There's a book called Slight Edge. That one can help you. There's another one I can't quite remember. But it is very essential in your trading success that you understand the law of compounds. <coughs> so sorry. <clears throat> the second one is the law of spirals. The law of spirals is basically every choice that you make, every action that you take is taking you towards or away from your goal. So for example, <clears throat> this weekend, I actually took it a lot slower than I normally do. I normally am constantly learning. I'm normally constantly doing things and go, 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 go. But I was sick all week. And I took this weekend to relax, to do some really long needed things around the house um, and just kind of let my body heal. Because when you're constantly go, 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 you are, you're really more hurting yourself than anything else. And so I took that time to do that. But if I did that every weekend, if I did that every day, I will not accomplish that which I seek. Because in order to accomplish your goals, you have to take action. You have to take consistent action daily. <clears throat> so understand the law of compounds, understand the law of spirals. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and here's what I mean by that. Law of spirals. It might be seen as the law of attraction, and it kind of is, but there's some distinct differences. So <clears throat> first of all, your beliefs determine your thoughts. Your thoughts determine your feelings. Your feelings determine your actions, and your actions determine your results, which in turn impact your beliefs. So if you take an action, let's say um, that you do less this week for whatever reason, and so your results start to spiral down. So you think, oh, well, people don't like what I do, I'm not relevant, blah, 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 and you start this downward spiral, right? But if you take action and you start seeing the positives or you <laughs> take whatever mistakes you've seen and turn them into learning lessons and you start thinking of the positive, it will start to grow and grow and grow and build your confidence. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so law of spirals, law of compounding. Number five, you need to understand risk management. If you're watching this on Facebook right now, I don't actually have the link, but I will repost it later. <clears throat> but I did, <coughs> I'm so sorry, I'm trying to get myself some water. 
I did a video a while back on <clears throat> why a pip is not a pip. I have so many friends and comp compatriots um, in the Forex world that are like, oh man, I made 300 pips and I did this and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And pips are great, right? They are what determine, um, you know, if you're going to make money or not, if you're positive or negative on your trades. But <clears throat> the problem is, is that there are two different types of traders. You have your old paradigm traders who are always looking for the big wins and a lot of pips, and you have the new paradigm traders who understand that there's a lot more to it than that. The biggest difference is that let's say you had two traders, right, or two trades, exact same pairs, exact same <clears throat> stop loss, entry, and take profit, all right? Um, if in, let's say they had a 10 pip stop loss, <clears throat> and if you don't know this, I'll put a card up on my YouTube or I'll put the link down below, but <clears throat> if... Um, if you have, let's say, um, on the on the old paradigm that they just say, I want to make, you know, 100 bucks off of this thing in this 10 pip take profit or whatever. <laughs> and so I'm going to put in uh, 0.1 lot size. But they don't realize that a 0.1 lot size is actually a lot more money at, uh, at risk because they don't understand how it works. And so let's say that both of these people... Um, do that and one person um, <clears throat> has a 1% in there and this other person just did a random lot size, this person right here, <laughs> every 10 pips would uh, make 1%, right? Because they had a 1% in their, in their 10 pip stop loss. But if the new paradigm, if the old paradigm um, had 20 pip stop loss because they expected from their charts or whatever that it was going to be a 20 pip stop loss and they were expecting a 10 pip take profit, which is not a good trade, by the way. Um, but let's say that that's what happened, right? Well, the person in the old paradigm who had the 20 pip stop loss would need 20 pips and take profit in order to make the same 1% gain. So it's really important that you understand your risk management. That includes um, <clears throat> the amount inside of... <laughs> your account. It includes um, understanding how much you're putting at risk, all kinds of things, right? So from there, um, number six, have a trading plan and make sure your, intruding, your trading plan includes but is not limited to <coughs> when you're going to trade, how long you're going to trade, the pairs that you're going to trade, right? This is all correlating, right? If you're if you're trading at nine o'clock central, central time, you're going to be trading in the um, Asian market, which might be slower moving. You need to know um, what confirmations you're going to use before you <coughs> take a trade and how many of those that must be uh, <coughs> in agreement for you to take that trade, right? <coughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> you have to understand your risk appetite. Do you want to in <coughs> invest 1% per trade, a half percent per trade? What happens if you keep losing? How much are you willing to risk per day, per week? You have to understand this before you get started um, trading because if you don't follow this plan, this is a really big way, a uh, uh, really big reason why most people blow their accounts is that they don't have this type of plan, right? <clears throat> and then finally, you want to uh, follow your proper risk management with every single pair, no exceptions. <clears throat> okay, so number seven, you only want to risk what you are willing to lose. And the reason why I put that in quotes is because you only risk things when you're uneducated, when you're not informed. And so that's why it's important to have the education, the mentorship, etc. cetera. Um, but sometimes, yeah, you know, Forex is not like a Miss Cleo. You're not going to be able to say oh, it's going to go here and then here and then here, right? That would be called insider trading. And that's impossible to do on Forex as far as I know. <clears throat> but you want to make sure that you only risk what you're willing to lose. So anything that you invest in Forex of your actual real account, your real money, it must be money that is not set aside for your bills. You have to be sure that your bills are paid for first. Forex is something that you build on the side, and eventually you can create such a, a large um, account from that that you can start paying your bills, right? Again, cash results not typical and do not guarantee your future success. I'm simply sharing with you what's possible. So do not take out of your bills funds. Um, anything you invest should be written off in your mind as spent or earmarked for your financial future. Okay. So number eight, you need to understand leverage. It can help you or really hurt you. Number nine, you want to check your emotions at the door because it will mess with your trading. It just will. <clears throat> um, 
And I'm going to show this actually in those trades that I actually lost last week. Because <clears throat> I was up like 1.5% by like Tuesday or something. And then Wednesday, um, I took two bad trades in the middle of of being in a little bit of emotional roller coaster and not thinking things through and they turn into losses. <laughs> so <clears throat> number 10, understand your tools and do not always assume that they are correct because when you do, excuse me, when you do, you are putting yourself up for failure. Tools are not perfect, right? They are using mathematics and science and whatever behind the scenes. They're automated, right? They're an intelligence AI, but they're not perfect. So you, <clears throat> whenever you use your tools, you should also always check out the charts for yourself because the tools, while they might be wrong, you might be able to go, oh, I see that they called this, but based off of my own charting, I think it's going to go this way. And you can actually turn a potential loss into a game. So do your own charting. Do not follow blindly. Number 11, analyze your trades. After your trades, check them out. <clears throat> I started doing that <clears throat> um, a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> actually about more about a month ago. And I was sharing my trades um, on my su on my Sunday lives, but I, I realized that this wasn't as much value that I could provide. And so I started taking screenshots this past week. And I think that's actually been a lot more helpful for me um, when I'm reviewing them, uh, but also that I can share with you more quickly while on these lives. So you want to analyze your trades because you want to know what went right. What exactly about this, tri was, uh, about this trade was correct so that you can start building your RAS and helping it to see what it needs to see to be more successful more often. You also want to know what went wrong or, or how you can improve your trading in the future because every time that you lose a trade, it's not really a loss, right? Yes, you might lose some money or whatever, but it's not really a loss as long as you learn what happened. If you go back and go, man, I should have seen that I, you know, I, I forgot my Fibonacci retracement or I didn't follow my trading plan or I was trading when I was fighting with my significant other. <clears throat> These are things that can really impact your trading, and so you want to make sure that you know it. Hey, thanks so much for joining. So, all right. Um, so, again, it's never a failure. It's just a learning lesson. Number 12, and only a few more, and then I'll go into the trades from last week. Number 12, do not get greedy. If you, are, if you do get greedy, this is when, again, your emotions start to rise. You start to kind of mess up your trades a bit. Um, and the other thing is, on the flip side of that, is do not feel like you have to make back whatever you lost. If you start to get your emotions awry and you don't start thinking things logically and um, without emotion, it will negatively impact your trading. Yeah, you might make some some trades, right? But the, the way the human brain works, this will not work in your favor. So do not get greedy, right? Stick to your trading plan. And um, do not feel like you have to make it back. Hey, Israel, what tool am I using? I, you saw in my chat. I'm not sure what you mean by different color or what you mean by my tool. So if you could clarify that for me, I'd appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, so um, number 13, cut your losses. You have to know when you should cut your losses. Um, your stop loss is there to save you in case your trade goes the wrong direction. So you should always have a stop loss. That's probably like number tip number 16. Always, 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 always have a stop loss. I have had so many friends not have stop losses and I've just been so scared for them and they would lose like hundreds if not thousands of dollars because they didn't put in their stop loss. Always have a stop loss. Um, but know how, to, how and when to cut your losses. It is better to cut your losses early and get into a new trade than to continue to um, think, oh, it'll turn around, oh, it'll get better. No, no, no. If you keep thinking that and it keeps going lower, you've lost your whole investment that you just made in that single trade, right? Versus maybe half of the investment you made so you can go make another one. So learn how to cut your losses and always, always have a stop loss. Number 14, recognize that everyone makes mistakes even the pros, okay? So if you make a mistake, don't beat yourself up. Again, the reason why you have stop losses is to mitigate or minimize your risk and <coughs> and all that. So even though you make mistakes, as long as you learn from it, you're fine because even the pros make mistakes. And then number 15, finally, is be consistent. If you're not consistent with learning to trade, with making your trades, with sticking to your trading, um, uh, what did I call it, trading plan. Hello. If you're not consistent with all of that, then you're not going to be consistently winning because 
you have to train your RAS. Like I said earlier, learning how to trade Forex is kind of like a profession, right? Um, you can find one, you can find one strategy that works for you and go with it, and that's great. But if you're not consistent with it, you're not going to see consistent process. You're not going to see consistency in learning to see where they're at, right? So you have to be consistent. Okay, so that was the 15 tips on how not to blow your account. Let me go ahead and share my screen. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, on the trades that I took last week. And I'm so sorry, I totally forgot to set this up. So I'm bringing up the <coughs> page right now. Um, okay, so here is, oops, wrong thing. Share screen. Perfect. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, on my Daily Wealth Ninja page, this is my for, uh, Facebook page, this is, aside from YouTube, where I host most of my videos at this point, um, Facebook is where I'm at. I do have an Instagram page, Daily Wealth Ninja. Um, I'm not on there a whole lot. I'm mostly here on Facebook. So here on Daily Wealth Ninja, if you click on See More, there is um, Photos section. So what I've started doing is I've created an album for my weeks. Um, here is one results from week of blah, blah. So this, these are where I'm going to showing my results. Again, past results not typical, and do not guarantee nor dictate your future success. Your results are based off of your actions, level of education, and appetite for risk. I'm simply sharing with you my experience and what I've been learning, <clears throat> and I am not a licensed financial advisor. I'm simply sharing with you my um, journey with Forex. So these are the trades that I took last week. I think one might be missing, but I think I got them all. So let's go ahead and look at this. So I think this is the first, I think it's an order. <coughs> when I first did this, I, I think they were kind of not in order. So what does it look like for you guys? Oh, I guess that won't work. Let me do this. Looking on Facebook. Appreciate the love. Appreciate it. All right. So yeah, you should be able to see it. <clears throat> so first of all, this trade was on the NZD JPY or the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen on the 15 minute um, time frame. You can see that I have an indicator called MTFA H HMA with bands and my Fast 33. These are graciously provided by one of my mentors um, <clears throat> who I first heard about through that same company I was telling you about that I have access to. Um, he graciously provided this to his students and I it's been amazing. <clears throat> um, this is not going to be a training about that. <clears throat> I'll do it another day. Um, but I have that. I have my parabolic stars, my... Um, moving averages indicator that I shared in my last video and something called pivot point, <clears throat> which um, I will not be giving a training today, but it basically shows you your pivot points on your charts. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> so again, this trade um, was winning. Uh, it's, it came down into the red about here. So almost to the halfway point of my trade, I believe this was a 10 pip stop loss. So, uh, maybe three, three to four pips in stop loss. I'm still not sure what you mean by trading platform. Um, I use TradingView, which is open to anyone who wants to use it. Um, there is no algorithm or, or automatic indicators that I have on here. All the, as far as I'm aware, except for the Ichimoku Kyo something, the Ichimoku Cloud. Um, they're all lagging indicators, so they're not actually automatic indicators, so I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. So <clears throat> as you can see here, um, I got in about here. This is, um, I'm not sure how it did that, if it's only 15 minute, but I got in about here. It came down, and as you can see, it hit the 200 exponential moving average and then bounced back up. So in part of the moving averages training that I gave, I did, I thought I said, um, that you can use the moving averages as potential um, support and resistance lines. And that's what happened here, right? It came up. Uh, it hit probably a support resistance level here. It came back down to the 200 moving average, then came all the way back up and hit my take profit up here. So this trade um, also shows you over here on this side, 
with my Heikinashi candles that we had green up to this point, red down to here, and then, oops, not down to there, down to this candle, and then we started to have green all the way up. And they were big, right? These were big Heikinashi candles. So for those who don't know what Heikinashi candles, they're really great for trend. They're great for a lot of other things. Um, I'll do a training on that other day. So this is what this particular trade looked like. And as I said, um, with it, it happened in under four hours. So this would be a 2% increase. Okay, so I think this one was used with my pivot tool that I have um, access to with that uh, membership that I have. And so this was actually, I guess, I guess this was a 20 pip. No, there's no way. It said a 2% increase. So it must have been 20 pips. Let's see. Oh, it was. Look. Okay. All right. So you can actually see from this box right here that it was a 20 pip um, take profit, which means that uh, I don't know why this is so big down here then. Maybe it wasn't a 2%. But if it was a 10 pip stop loss, <laughs> then I would have gained 2%, right? Because this is a 20 pip take profit. Um, I'm not sure why this is so large. So that's how that one went. This trade here. So um, in the last training that I gave with moving averages, I talked about a descending triangle. This is that exact same triangle that I was talking about. And so you see that it kind of came out a little bit. Um, it start, excuse me. It started to try and break here, and then it drove all the way down past here, went a little bit past the 200 exponential moving average, and then came back up into the triangle. So this would be what's called a fake out, right? And if you don't have proper indicators, this could have really got you got you uh, pretty far out. So you can also see that I have um, the Fibonacci retracement on here. It went all the way, to, it, it actually went a lot further than I expected, um, but it hit the negative 382, which is like one point something. <laughs> um, but it definitely went through and hit the um, <sighs> Fibonacci there um, as, as it's anticipated to do with it. So this one, this one didn't, really um, go anywhere because at the time that I did it, you can see that I have this arrow here and for, uh, is this the one? Something happened around here that was indicating to me that it was turning around and going and going to try and break out of that triangle. Had I stayed in the trade, um, I probably would have gotten out somewhere around here because it never actually went to my take profit, which was much deeper um, than what was there. So you can see that it hit this particular pivot level, which is um, from the pivot, um, pivot point indicator. And then it came back up, back into here, and it actually broke through here, and you'll see that trade here in a minute. Again, here's the candles, right? We have red, 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 green, and then it's kind of bouncing back and forth here, which usually indicates consolidation. So that was that one. I got myself, I got psyched out, which is partly why you have to leave your emotions at the door. I psyched myself out, got out early, took it as a loss. <clears throat> it would have been in, in the green had I not, but that's what your demo account is for. That's what your um, reviews of your trades are for to know what to do or what not to do the next time. So this one is a different trade. I don't, which, which one is this? So this is the Euro um, USD. And this trade, so I got in here, right, on this candle. And you can see right here that the four simple moving average and the 20 exponential moving average had crossed. So that to me was an indication that it was probably going to go down. <clears throat> um, there were some other indications here, right? So down here, this indicator showed me that it was red. The five minute and the one minute, I believe, also showed me that it was red. The Heikinashi candles were all reds up until about here. And the Fibonacci retracement showed that it 
went to the 6.1 and kept going, but it hit this quarter level and then bounced back up <coughs> through the pivots. And I say pivots because these lines were created um, based off of the tool that I used to create my pivots. These pivots right here, uh, if you can see it, there's a, a dotted line there. Those pivots are from this indicator, um, and I have not really used that a whole lot. It's more of confirmation of my other pivots training or scanner. So here, again, um, it was a 10 pip gain with a 10 pip stop loss, which means I had 1% invested at risk in this trade, and it hit my <coughs> 10 pip take profit in uh, two hours. So I increased my account by 1% in two hours. Most banks can't increase your account by 1% in like a year. <laughs> so that's that one. This one was also a win. <clears throat> and this was a really, really good win actually. So here's what happened. So this one was definitely a level, excuse me, was this a level? Yes, this was a level scanner scan or uh, trade. So um, with the uh, membership that I have, there's several different tools. They have a new one out with pivots. They have a new one out with what's called levels. And basically um, I saw on that trade that this was um, going to, it was indic indicative that this was going to be a good trade. So I looked at it, I did my own charting, and I said, you know, it's probably true. So I looked at it, and I, I put it in, and it had a 20 pip stop loss, which is a little big for my taste, but um, the theory behind this particular um, tool is, is pretty solid. So it had a 20 pip stop loss, it had a 40 pip potential take profit, and it hit. It actually hit my 20, my 40 pip take profit. Um, the time frames that I use for those particular um, tools are the one hour, but depending on what I'm doing, the one hour or 15 minute is usually what I focus on with um, accessing pinpointed trades, looking at the one minute. So <laughs> like I was saying, the it was a 20 pip stop loss, a 40 pip gain, which means I actually gained 2% increase in my account. And I did it, I did it in one day. So in one day, I increased my account by 2% with a single trade. <clears throat> and as you, actually, as you can see here, the Heikinashi candles were mostly red, but they had some weird stuff going on around here as well. Okay, so this one, I wish I had been paying attention um, when this happened, but I believe, yeah, I think I did this, I think I did this at night, went to sleep, and then this part of my day, maybe it's backwards, I don't know. There was a reason I was not paying attention. Um, and I wish I had either put my stop, my pick profit a little bit lower to this particular entry level um, or done something else. But by the time that I had seen what was going on, um, I was about near this candle and I thought, well, actually that may not have been true. At some point, I was somewhere in the green and I was like, oh, sweet. I should probably move my take profit, excuse me, my stop loss to take profit. That way, if it goes south, I don't lose anything, right? And that's what happened. It went south. I think I raced it to a two pip above my, t my entry. And so it was actually a win. It just wasn't a large win. I think it was like a couple of bucks or something, maybe. <clears throat> um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and so it 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 would have hit my st my stop loss, right? It actually went lower than my stop loss, and then came back up. Hey Dalton, thanks so much for joining. So that was that trade. Um, so it never actually went negative because I guess it was probably around here that I I moved it because it was so high up in in pips there. Yeah. All right. So next trade. This one. Yeah, perfect. All right, 
So <clears throat> this one was a 1% account increase with a 10 pip stop loss in less than one and a half hours. So I got in on this candle. Um, there was a 15 minute trend happening and you can see that it kind of broke out, but then it just kept going. And it also kept hitting the 200, excuse me, 200 exponential moving average. And so, as I said earlier, this can act like a support resistance, and it did. It hit that it hit that 200 moving average here, here, and then here, and then it zoomed all the way down, right? Even though there was green on this one, um, it was a huge crash on that trade pair, and then it started to come back up. So on here, again, 10 pip here, 10 pip here, and once it hit here in one hour and 30 minutes, I made 1% increase on my account using that trade. And so as you can see here on these lines, these were called on the tool that I use. Um, and so I decided to try and, and take all those pivots and thankfully I did. I could have even gotten one more, but I, I try to be a conservative trader. I don't wanna put more risk um, than is necessary. And then on the right side in my chart here, you can see that the <laughs> the Heiken <laughs> Ashi candles were pretty amazing, right? They were all red um, once they got to this candle right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. This one was also a winner. So this one took seven hours and seven minutes. It was about a 1% increase. I think it was maybe a little bit yeah, it was a little bit more because it's a 12.4 pip um, take profit with a 10 pip stop loss. Is this not what, not what we're going to do? So from here, you can see that the there was a lot of strange stuff happening right here with the moving averages. So this probably wasn't the wisest decision to get in here with all the crazy moving averages, but there were other indications that this is going south for me. Like um, like right here, I was not following the rule with this, <laughs> which is bad. <laughs> uh, but there were other indications that it was going to go down. And then right when I got in, it turned green and actually shot up. It hit this um, pivot level and then came back down. You can also see that Let's see, right here is where it crossed the 50 exponential moving average. And then right here is where the 20 and the 50 crossed, which usually indicates a great potential way to get into your trade, um, depending on which way it crosses. So right here would be a sell. If the 20 had been going this direction on the uh, 50, it would have been indication of a buy. Now over here on the right side, showing the Heiken Ashi candles, again, um, it was red. Hello. It was red through here, but right here, what, oops. This one right there, I don't know if I can zoom in any more than that. Um, it's actually an upside down hammer, so, or also known as an inverted hammer. This is a candle pattern, right? So it's an indication of a reverse in trend. I didn't see that when I got in. Um, and as you can see, it actually did reverse right here on this candle. So then it went up, uh, it hit, <coughs> actually it looks like it hit a support resistance right here, right? Right there, which was also that same place up here. And then it went back down and it did a double top and then it went straight down. All right. <clears throat> this one. I'm not quite sure what this is, what this um, box was saying. So I think, <clears throat> I think what happened here, like I know what happened with this trade, um, but the box, I don't think it actually really explains it. Yes, it does. Okay. <clears throat> so this trade, 
um, actually had a 20 pip stop loss. It was using the level scanner that I have, um, <clears throat> and it was expected to have a 40 pip gain. I put it in when I went to bed. I used a cell stop, no, a cell limit. And when I woke up, the call was no longer in the app. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I went and, because it was actually in the red at the time that I saw it. And again, I don't know why this box looks this way because it's not correct. Um, but it was, it, it was in the red and I was freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is not how this is supposed to work. Um, so I went to my levels, no, my pivots tool, and um, I was able to determine what the next possible level was to get out in profit, and I changed my take profit to whatever that was, um, and I think I lowered the stop loss, so let's see, can I tell from here if my computer will react? Okay. So... I woke up somewhere around here <laughs> and which is strange I don't quite remember so it was somewhere around here that I woke up put in the take profit but it doesn't look like it hit it so I don't again I don't know what this box is doing maybe this was a I don't know what it was doing, but whatever it was, I did end up in profit. Maybe I closed it out early. I don't know, but um, it, whatever it was, it panned out to a 0.5% increase. So it was about half of what I anticipated, and I did that in about six hours and 45 minutes. So it wasn't as big as a an increase as I had been having, but again, it's better to at least get one or two pips in profit and then get out. <clears throat> I think I only have one or two more. So this one was also in profit. This was three hours. It happened while I slept. This is great. Um, so as you can see, there was a huge downtrend here, <clears throat> or at least a big candle there. So plus this right here with the MTFA, um, we had the parabolic SARS up here. There were other several indicators that this was gonna be happening. It did come back up and hit the top part of my pitchfork which if you're not sure about that is, I have other trainings on that. And then it shot back down to one, two, three levels of my pitchfork and then came back up and is now dancing around, or at least at the time that I took the screenshot, is now dancing around the top. But because I understand how pitchforks work, I knew that this was a pretty good um, option for me for uh, getting some pips in. So it was, it was a 10 pip stop loss with a 10 pip gain. So I gained 1% into my account in three hours while I slept. All right. I think there's, yeah. So this is one of the ones that I was saying earlier that you have to keep your emotions in check. <coughs> so I'm not going to talk about all the lines here. I didn't want to clean it up. But basically, we had the end of the pitchfork here. So that's what these lines are right here. Um, we see that. Sorry, excuse me. My dog um, is going to get down off of my lap now that the storms are over. <coughs> sorry. And so <clears throat> I had an alert from one of my tools that the... SMA4 had crossed the EMA50, which normally means great pips. This is not the case here, and I think it was because there was some news somewhere around here. I don't quite remember. I should have made note of it. I'll try to remember that the next time. So um, because I had proper risk management and I had invested, excuse me, I had 1% of my account at risk in that 10 pips, I only lost 1% of, of my account. So that was sad. Oh, well, boo-hoo. It's part of learning, right? <clears throat> it's just part of Forex, actually. <coughs> so sorry. So that was that trade. <coughs> Again, so sorry. I'll probably be coughing like this next week. Um, this one. Ah, yes, this one I lost as well. I think because I was in a rush. Um Yeah, so I got in it 
way too early. You can see that there was a very long wick. Um, this is actually uh, what looks like to be a, <laughs> a potential inverted hammer. It didn't quite actually go up. I don't know if it actually went up afterwards. But the reason why I say that I did this most likely during a, a bit of um, emotional upheaval is because this yellow box here you can see that the price action was moving sideways which means it's in consolidation which means you should not be trying to, to um, do trading inside of consolidation unless you're a scalper and even then eh, uh, <laughs> you can um, but again I got out um, because I, I got in too early I was I was being greedy and um, you don't want to do that when you don't want to be greedy and you don't want to rush yourself so that's what happened with that trade And then this one, yeah, this one was a winning trade. I believe this was a levels call because the stop loss and the take profit don't seem to really match. That's strange. Maybe it was a levels call. Either way, um, this turned out to be a 2% increase because it's a 20 pip uh, hmm. if that's 20, this looks like it might be 40. That can't be right. I will take better notes for next time. Um, the when I did this, I was under the impression and with whatever I was looking at that this was actually a 2% increase. Probably I was looking at the actual numbers, like the, uh, the price that was earned when I looked at the trade. And, um, as you can see, it was dancing around the 20 exponential moving average. It then had the 20 exponential moving average cross above the 50. And we see that it shot up and hit my take profit on this one right here. You can see from the Heikinashi candles, if the screen will move over. Come on screen. There we go. You can see that it, again, hit this trend line right here. And then it came down with the Heiken Ashi candles. It hit the 20 exponential moving average and then shot up until it kind of bounced around here in consolidation. And then we're back at the beginning. So, thank you so much for watching today. I know that took a little bit more time um, than I had really anticipated, but thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you are watching this on Facebook Live, please be sure to tap on the Live button and be notified when I go live. If you are on YouTube, there should be a subscribe button right about here. <laughs> And um, again, if you found value in this, please like this video, share it with someone you think should hear it today. And as always, I am focused on empowering at least 10 people to become debt free by 2020. If you want to learn more about what I'm doing, how it can help you and your family, please do reach out. Um, this is something that I am truly passionate about and that I think everyone should learn this skill set. So again, have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your week and I will see you on the next one. Bye.